welcome back to Franklin Covey's On Leadership podcast series. My name is Scott Miller, and I'm privileged to serve as your host and interviewer each week. I am also the new author of Franklin Covey's number one new Amazon release, Master Mentors, 30 Transformative Insights from Your Greatest Minds. Volume one is out now, the first of 10 volumes being published by Harper Collins. In fact, today's guest is one of the Master Mentors featured in this new book, very simply, I had the privilege of picking 30 of what I thought were the most transformative insights shared from the first year of our podcast, wrote a quick, easy, breezy chapter about each of them with their permission, and I'm now on to Master Mentors Volume 2. Today's guest, Whitney Johnson, is in fact featured in Master Mentors as number 25. She is back for an encore appearance. Whitney Johnson, welcome back to On Leadership. Thank you, Scott. I am delighted to be here. Now, Whitney, you are an author of one of my all-time favorite books called Disrupt Yourself. You are also the author, author of a great book called Build an A-Team. I found Disrupt Yourself so compelling that I chose to invite you to be included as a featured mentor in Master Mentors Volume 1. You were gracious enough to fly out across the country to join the launch party with other mentors like Todd Davis, Stephen M. R. Covey, Liz Wiseman, Nick Vujicic, Bob Whitman, Ann Chow, and others. Thank you so much for selflessly coming across the country for the launch party. I appreciate your uh, partnering and supporting Master Mentors. You've been a friend of Franklin Covey's now for many years. You yourself are an acclaimed coach, keynote speaker. You host also one of the largest, most influential podcasts in the world. And today you're here at my invitation as a second appearance to talk about your new book releasing today called Smart Growth. How to Grow Your People to Grow Your Company. I was privileged to have a soft cover advanced copy. The book comes out, it's out now in hardcover. Whitney, for those last few people who may not be familiar with your journey and your own path, would you, would you spend a few minutes talking about what brought you to now write this new book called Smart Growth? Mm, I would love to, Scott. And, and thank you so much for having me. And it was an absolute pleasure to be at your launch party for Master Mentors. You are the the consummate host and it was really a privilege and pleasure Thank to be you. there with you as number 25 in your master mentor series so what brought me to write this book is i had written a book called disrupt yourself and taken the framework of disruptive innovation um, that i learned in from my late mentor clayton christensen and applied this framework of disruption to individuals and uh, then i wrote build an a team where we applied the framework to building a team well, in the background of both of those books, there was the S curve of learning. And this is something that I had developed after using the S curve in our investing to think about how quickly an innovation would be adopted. I started to have this insight that the S curve could help us understand how we learn and how we grow. And in both of those books, we used it, but was always kind of this supporting actor in the background where we would use it, but, but it wasn't front and center. And one of the things that we discovered as we were talking about these ideas is that people were latching onto the S curve. And it's because it's a simple, simple visual model for people to think about what growth looks like. And growth is our default setting. We all want to grow. And so I thought, I need to spend more time on this. I need to do a deeper dive on this S curve and, and make it clearer so that more people can use it to think about their own growth. Whitney, in this book, Smart Growth, today we're going to talk very clearly about the six stages of growth. Unlike a lot of interviews where I skip around throughout the book, I think the simplicity and practicality, the applicability of these six stages is so valuable. We're going to spend our time on that. Before we do that, although I don't have a graphic of the S-curve of learning, would you talk a little bit about why that's so instrumental? Maybe visually illustrate us through the words yeah. so that everybody can kind of follow along with us as we go through these six stages. Yeah, I would love to. So here, here's what I would do. I want everybody who's listening and or watching to take their finger out and draw a line um, from the, let's see, how do I want to do this? From the left to the right, this flat line, and I basically want you to picture an S. And so every time you start something new, you are at the bottom of that S. And what we know from S-curve math is that that growth is, is happening, but it's not yet apparent. So it feels very slow. It can feel like a slog. And that's why we sometimes get discouraged or impatient when we start something new. 
Um, but then you're going to put in that effort and with that, you will then move into the sweet spot of that S, that the steep, sleek back of that S curve. And this is where everything is going fast. Um, unlike at the launch point where it felt like not much was happening, um, it took a lot of time for anything to happen. Now in the sweet spot, in a little time, a lot happens and you feel exhilarated. And this is the sweet spot. So you have slow at the base of the S, then you have fast in the sweet spot of the S, and then as you approach mastery, as you get very good at something, you start to feel the sense of, I've got to figure it out. But because you're no longer learning, you're no longer enjoying the feel good effects of learning, you can get kind of bored. And so you've now gone from the bottom of the S slow and then fast and then slow. This is how we grow. This is basically a model for you to think about the growth cycle. And once you get to the top of that S curve, you need to think about jumping to the bottom of a new S curve so that you can continue to grow. So that's the basic framework is just in your mind, picture an S with a flat bottom, a steep side, and then a flat top. Whitney, I've thought about this S curve of learning for uh, on countless occasions when I'm on a podcast as a guest promoting the Master mm -hmm. Mentors book. Uh, oftentimes the host will ask me about Whitney Johnson and this idea of disrupting your career. And I've thought about many things that you've said. In fact, I quote you frequently. Perhaps I misquote you. But one of the most <laughs> profound things that you said, you can correct me today, was there comes a time in most people's career, around 18 months or so, perhaps it's longer for some, shorter for others, where we've mastered the job, right? The thrill, the engagement is over, and we now can kind of do it on autopilot. And that we don't recognize that perhaps others see that we've mastered it. And although we're not phoning it in, we have a sense of complacency about us. And it's more palatable in the eyes of others than perhaps even in our own selves. We may think we're disguising it fairly well, but because of the excitement and the mastery has now passed, others are noticing it more readily than we are. That can be detrimental to our careers. To what extent did I get that right or wrong? You got it completely 100% right. And I think what's so powerful about what you just said is that we get to the top of that S curve and we think, oh, I'm people don't know. They can't tell that I'm kind of bored, that I'm kind of cranky, that I'm casting about for the next thing to do. But they can, in fact, tell because there is this sense that you are bored. There's a sense of, well, we, you know, we've already tried that and it doesn't work. That's not how we do it here. And so there's all sorts of tells that we have that let people know that, in fact, we are ready to do something new. And so I think when people come to us and say, hey, have you thought about doing something different? It may not be that they don't have your best interest in heart. In fact, they do. They want to see you continue to grow. They want to see your organization continue to grow. And they know that when you're at the top of the curve and you aren't challenged, you've got this latent innovative capacity. And the only way to unleash that is to either jump to the bottom of a new curve or find challenges that push you back down into the sweet spot of the curve. Nicely said, and I'm glad I've been quoting you properly. Okay, so with this sort of lazy sideward S in mind, mm -hmm. we're gonna spend the remainder of our time talking about these six critical stages. You call them one, the explorer, mm -hmm. two, the collector, three, the accelerator, four, the metamorph, and then finally the anchor and the mountaineer. Quite pragmatically, I'm gonna pitch you each of these and ask you, Whitney, if you would take maybe two or three minutes apiece, and let's talk mm -hmm. about each of these and why they're so vital to everybody's stages and why leaders inside organizations should be familiar with these as well. Let's talk first about the explorer. Yeah, all right. So as an explorer, that is at the launch point of the S curve. And so you may have planned to be in that place on the curve. You may have been pushed there either way. You now are in this place where you have to decide, do I want to be here? Do I want to stay on this S curve? And so there are a number of questions that we encourage you to ask yourself as you're deciding whether you're going to stay here or not. Think about you're on a desert island. You're like, do I want to stay on this island or do I want to go to a different island? And so there are questions that you want to ask such as, is there enough novelty, but not too much novelty? Is this something that I believe that I can attain, that I actually believe is achievable? Is this consistent with my identity? It may not be today's identity, but the identity of, of who I aspire to be. And is it consistent with my why? And so the explorer phase is very important for you to think about, do I actually want to be on this particular S curve or do I want to jump 
to a different S curve. So the explorer stage is very important in part, even if you think you know what you wanna do next, you want to make sure you honor this because when we don't take the time to explore, that's how quarter life and midlife and late life crises comes, become because we haven't done that work of figuring out, yes, I am committed, I want to be on this particular S curve. So that's the explorer phase. Whitney, for those who are listening and watching around the world, and we're starting to kind of plot ourselves on this S curve right now, what are the telltale signs that someone knows when they're moving from explorer to what you call collector, the next phase? Mm. Yeah, so explorer, so once you've decided, okay, I, I think I wanna stay here. I'm not gonna jump. I, 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 wanna, I wanna see if I can potentially plant my flag on this particular S curve. As you um, have made that decision of, yeah, this is worth my time to explore this further, you then move into the collector stage. And the collector stage is where you're collecting data. You're collecting um, qualitative data. You're collecting quantitative data. The qualitative data is, am I getting feedback from people that this in fact makes me sense for me to be here? As I'm exploring this further, am I getting data that says, yeah, I can, I, I want to do this. I think I could be good at this. Am I getting quantitative data that suggests that I'm gaining momentum? And part of this part of the curve is that it's so important to be childlike, to have a childlike wonder and curiosity and, and be in this place of getting all sorts of feedback of, yes, this is working. No, that isn't working. And because once you collect all that data, then you're going to make that definitive decision that in fact, yes, I am going to stay on this S curve. Yes, I am committed to this S curve. I'm now going to, and I'm now on the, on the edge, on the verge of tipping into the sweet spot of my growth where things really start to accelerate. And one quick note, at the launch point, what's happening is your brain is running this predictive model. And we always have these hypotheses of what it would take to get to the top of that curve. And at the launch point, a lot of your predictions are wrong. So you get a lot of drops in dopamine. But as you collect all that data, your predictions are gradually getting more accurate and you're saying, okay, yeah, I wanna stay here because I think there's some upside surprises when it comes to dopamine in store for me. So I'm gonna stay here, I'm ready to accelerate, move into the sweet spot. You know, as I've read this, um, I'm gonna talk about this book a lot in the coming weeks and months on my own social media because I think everyone that has a professional career should draw out their own S curve and begin to plot mm -hmm. themselves as an explorer, as a collector, as a mountaineer and kind of figure out where are they because you can have these phases multiple times throughout your organization, throughout your career, not, is yeah. that not true? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at any given time, we're on multiple S curves. So, so as an individual, if you're, you can be on, on one part of the S curve when it comes to your career overall, right. but then you can right. also be on another S curve when it comes to a particular job that you're in. Um, you can be on a different S curve in terms of your domain expertise. For example, you could be a master, but certainly at the launch point as a leader. And in any given role, if you've got four or five projects that you're working on, some of them you may be in mastery and some of them you may be on the launch point. And ideally you wanna have a balance of those. You don't wanna be only on the launch point or only on the mastery, but yes, you can consider it's a fractal, right? Your life is an S curve and then you can just continually drill down um, deeper and deeper into different S curves and different parts of your life. So I have no earthly clue what a fractal is, but I wanna go back for a moment because I think you actually just said the money phrase of this entire interview, which is we're not just on one S curve, we're on continual S curves, perhaps mm -hmm. inside of your current career with your employing organization, perhaps on the S curve of the learning within your, your experience or your industry, perhaps yep. your overarching career, at least three, S curves are we on? And we should be looking yeah. at those kind of um, in, in integrated fa fashion. Uh, I won't have you school me on what a fractal is. I probably could guess, but you organize these six stages into three components. The first one is called the launch port point for smart growth leaders. That's where we mm -hmm. have the explorer and the connector, or the collector rather. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. we move to the next two that you call the sweet spot for smart yeah. growth leaders. And those are yeah. the what you call the accelerator and then the metamorph. Riff on yeah. the accelerator. 
Yeah. All right. So this is this is this is the fun part. So as I said a minute ago, at the launch point, it's slow. And there's something new that you want to do. And it's at this point, it's something that you are doing. It's not at all a part of your identity. You're figuring out, you're trying it on. Do I want this to be part of my identity? But once you've done the work of being an explorer, of doing the work of being a collector, you then move into the sweet spot. And this is the initial part of this is the accelerator, that part, that steep, sleek back of the curve that I mentioned earlier, where things are going fast. That predictive model that I mentioned a minute ago is you're starting to get all of these predictions correct. It's like in the stock market when they keep beating your estimates, that's dopamine that's kicking in and saying, yep, upside surprise, upside surprise. And so what's happening there is you're just feeling increasingly competent and confident and this sense of autonomy, this sense of belonging, and it is an exciting, exciting part of your growth. And, and we want to be there as long as we possibly can. Now, one of the challenges when you're in the accelerator stage is there's this sense of, it creeps upon you unawares because at the launch point, you're feeling uncomfortable and impatient and discouraged. And then all of a sudden, one day, you're not feeling any of those things. And so you kind of have to look around and say, huh, everything is going well, probably means you're in the sweet spot because things are hard, but they're not too hard and they're easy, but they're not yet too easy. So that's the accelerator part where it just, things are, are just taking off. Whitney, we all go through a metamorphosis in our career. Perhaps we know it subconsciously, yeah. consciously. Talk about this fourth stage called the metamorph. Yeah. You mean the name that we made up? Um, I love so it. <laughs> the, the but you also, made, you also made up this fractal thing too, so that's not stopping you. Keep going. <laughs> oh, fractal I did not make up. I, I don't get credit for that one. Um, but, but metamorph is, again, at the launch point, it's like something you do. It's not who you are. Um, as you move into the sweet spot and you're going fast, you're gradually metamorphing um, or metamorphosing. And so you're, as you move toward the top of the sweet spot, starting to get ready to move into mastery, whatever it is you took on, whatever it is you were trying to do, whether it's a new hobby, whether it's a new role, um, whether it's, yeah, a new hobby, new role, there's lots of different things you could do. It's shifting from who, what you're doing to who you are. And a very quick example is if you decide you want to run or you decide you want to write a book or you decide you want to be a podcaster. When you're at the launch point, it's like, I'm going to podcast or I'm going to write a book or I'm going to run. When you're in the metamorph stage, you start to say, I am a runner. I am a writer. I am a podcaster. And so you have transformed. And we talk in the book about caterpillars becoming butterflies. That's the time when you are becoming that winged jewel, the butterfly. Whitney, that's fascinating. We recently interviewed James Clear, the author of the book, Atomic Habits. Uh, everybody knows that this book has sold 5 million copies. And you know, the premise of James's work in his book really is around changing your mindset, no, no surprise there, but really understanding your identity because your behaviors and your habits lead to an identity. But it's important mm -hmm. to also sometimes to reverse those, right? Is I am a non-smoker. I am an organized person. I am yep. an author. I think it was Patrick Bet David who wrote the book, Your Next Five Moves, one of my all-time favorite books. He calls it your future truth. He calls that the importance of knowing and speaking in a perhaps future identity. In many ways, you're saying the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And love James Clear's work. He's fantastic. And, and actually, he inspired me. This whole journey or odyssey I went on of becoming a runner was inspired after I had interviewed him for our podcast. So love that. And I, I think that's absolutely true. One of the stories that we talk about in the book is a, a computer programmer by the name of Marcus Whitney. And he, you know, he was a dropout from college. He had two kids that he needed to take care of. He's working in a restaurant. He's like, I want a better life. He remembered that as a child, his uncle had given him a, him a computer. He kind of learned how to program. He was like, this is my way. This is this is the key to mobility. And so he decided to start learning to program, but he didn't say, I am becoming a programmer. He said, I am a programmer. And so early on at the launch point, and even in the early stages of Accelerator, you might say, I am, and you aren't yet that person. But by the time you're in the metamorph stage, you can say, I am, and you in fact are. Whitney, thank you for that. Let's recap. The first of the two stages are explore and collector on the S-curve. Mm -hmm. We recognized yep. that 
uh, although I was unable to define fractal, I certainly understood the value of having multiple S-curve journeys at the same time. I know, they're gonna, they're gonna email me and every, I'll, I'll get, I'll probably get 7,000 emails that give me the definition fractal. of fractal, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you call those two the launch point for smart growth leaders. These yeah. last two were accelerator and metamorph, derived from the ter <laughs> term metamorphosis. You describe yeah. these as a sweet spot for smart growth leaders. Mm -hmm. And then right. you take us at the end with number five anchor and number six mountaineer, yeah. you put yeah. together as sort of the mastery for smart growth leaders. Talk about what it means to have, to be in the role of anchor. Yeah, so anchor is, you're not the anchorer, but in fact, you are an anchor because that behavior, that thing that you were trying to do or become is now you, like you are anchored in that. It is part of your identity. It is not separate from you. So the trans transformation is complete. Now, part of the reason that this particular stage of growth is so important is that we tend to go straight from metamorph to mountaineer. What am I going to do next? And yet we know that it's so important for us to celebrate. Part of the anchoring is the celebration phase. And so we talk about taking that moment to pause, to celebrate what it is you've accomplished, celebrate the fact that you have anchored that behavior, also recognizing that there is a, 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 some poignancy involved um, because you know that while you are at the top of the mountain, you can't stay there forever. That plateau will become a precipice. And so there's this sense of, of longing of, yes, I'm anchored. And yes, I know that I need to do something new. But that place, that moment, that brief moment, we want to pause. We want to smell the flowers. We want to see the view, see the perspective of what we've accomplished by being now at the top of our S curve. And so that's a very important, albeit brief phase of your growth. It is, it is integral and vital. And then land with the concept of mountaineer. Yeah, well, that's, um, by the way, fractal, just for everybody who's like, now that you've been teasing me the entire time, it's like this idea of the curve within the curve within the curve. Like the more you look, every time you, dive in deeper, you it's still the same shape. So someone else actually may write in and say, I didn't get that definition right, but that's my understanding of what fractal is. So um, mountaineer, well, it's pretty obvious, right? So when you get to the top of the mountain, we know that um, anybody who is a mountaineer will tell you that any altitude above 26,000 feet is known as the death zone. So you're so high up your uh, brain and body will start to die. And when you think about this metaphorically, actually not even just metaphorically, literally, if you stay at the top of an S curve for too long, your brain and your body will literally start to die. And so you have to make a choice. Are you going to find a way to jump to a new S curve, jump to a new mountain? Or are you going to find a way for this to be a summit, not the summit? So basically when you get to the top of that mountain, it's important for you to keep climbing, um, to honor this growth cycle, to understand you needed to be at the launch point, you needed to be in the sweet spot, you need to be um, in mastery, um, but to continue to grow, you now need to move back into the launch point. So top of the mountain, keep climbing, be a mountaineer. We're interviewing astrophysicist Whitney Johnson today, who's explaining the concepts of fra I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Whitney, I, I wish. I, I, wish. I know, right? Whitney, I like you. I don't know you extremely well. We've had uh, multiple encounters together. Your books have had a significant impact on me. Your book, Disrupt Yourself, was probably the genesis behind me leaving my executive role at Franklin Covey after 25 years. My wife has you to thank for that instability <laughs> and our income the last couple of years. Your book, Disrupt Yourself, it truly, it had a profound impact on me because you know we've heard these phrases, act or be acted upon. I came ac across this uh, comment, a colleague of mine said, you know, it's kind of both horrifying and insightful, which is you're never in the room when your career is being decided for you. And it was a combination of reading your book, Disrupt Yourself, and having that phrase haunt me, where I really wanted to make sure that I was always in control of my career. And now you've written this book, Smart Growth, which I think is a great manual for not every leader who is trying to invest in her or his team. We see, we see thousands of companies now that are fighting against the great resignation. They're trying to build a culture where people can find career inside their organization that can fulfill most of their career. Not every organization can offer that. 
but I, I think your books are enormously practical. You host, I think, what is a really engaging podcast. In fact, I want to share a glimpse into who you are as a person. Um, just this morning, I am taking some uh, shortly prescribed medicine for an ailment I have that requires me to eat some food in the morning. And just this morning, my wife asked me uh, if I would like to have an English muffin with my medication. And uh, I said, yes. In fact, can I tell you, Whitney Johnson sent me a jar of like home curated preserves. I'm not quite sure. And so just this morning, I pulled out of the pantry uh, some, uh, some jam that you sent me and made me because I was a guest on your podcast. So not only are you, are you a renowned coach, uh, a speaker at the World Business Forum. You're a best-selling author. You host one of the largest podcasts in the world. You also are a great friend and a kind person that you would have thought to send as a gift to one of your podcast guests. You were hosting me. And this morning, I had a great chance to partake in your preserves. Thank you for being uh, the essence of what like a servant leader is. I think your work is extraordinarily practical and inspiring. And I think you're all around a great person. I'm delighted to call you a friend. Oh, you're so sweet. I'm practically going to cry. I'm not sweet. It's not a word ever been used to describe me, but I am I, accurate. I, I, I think you're sweet. Well, just so you know, the story is that those berries, um, as you read in the book, are from our our berry farm and we grew them ourselves and picked them ourselves and we made the jam ourselves. So I'm glad that you enjoyed it. That makes me really happy. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And my thank you note is on its way to you. Whitney Johnson, the author of the new release, Smart Growth, How to Grow Your People to Grow Your Company. I actually think this is a great book to buy for your team as a leader, mm -hmm. buy a copy for everyone on your team and sit down and perhaps draw out an S curve on 11 by 17 paper, have people vulnerably authentically plot where are they on this, not just in their current job, but perhaps even in your organization, perhaps like Whitney said earlier, with your industry knowledge. And I think it's the, I think it's the great leader that can create a culture where everybody would feel comfortable to plot where they are on this and talk about it openly so everybody kind of knows where they are in their journey and be transparent about it. That to me would be a great exercise for every team leader. Whitney Johnson, thank you for coming back for a second interview. Thank you for being agreed to be featured as a master mentor and we wish you great success with Smart Growth. Oh, thank you, Scott. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you back here next week for a new discussion on leadership. <music>